Hey Roses, it's Sugar Rose Studios and today we're going to be doing another craft with me video and I'm going to be painting a bunch of orphan horses so stay tuned for that. I'm having a sale right now on all the customs on my website excluding commissions so go check that out. I have the link in my description. All right, let's get started. I feel like it's really funny because I have like no commissions or no orders and then for like a few days and then it's all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, there's like 20 I have to do. So it's kind of, but it's okay because I graduate and really soon, um, I graduate on the 6th of June. So I'm so excited to finally be done with high school because it sucked this year so much as a senior. So like I didn't have prom, I didn't have like any of the things that a normal senior has. Oh my god, my chair is so squeaky. Ah. Um, but I didn't have like look at this paintbrush, it's like in the okay. Um, yeah, so I didn't have any of the things normal seniors get, and that sucked a lot. And online learning was also not fun, but I kind of chose to do it at the end just because I didn't want to go to school because I like lost all my friends, so that's the end. Um, alright, so what I'm doing right now, so these are a bunch of pictures. What I usually do is I put um, the horses that I'm going to paint on Instagram and like I just use the paint dropper tool and I find like the colors, like the base colors. Um, so for example, this is going to be this mojo horse. So it looks like it's kind of like this shade, which I was also doing on another model. So that's like about the same shade a little bit kind of different so basically what i do when i'm doing this is i have these little containers of paint i think i got these at walmart they're like literally like sauce containers um so oh, wow we get one of these and then i take my liquitex acrylic paints which are down here hopefully not kill everything in the process. So I have all of these acrylic paints and what I'll basically do is I kind of eyeball it. I have quite a bit of experience mixing browns and like horse colors. It, tooting sounds. If you add red oxide and we don't always get the right color on the right on the first try, but it looks like we're getting there. We're just gonna mix this all in. Do, 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 do. So I promise I'm not bald. I have a bun. It's just is strange looking right now because you don't see you just see on my big Jojo Siwa forehead. Um, family. It's hard because the colors dry differently than they actually are right now. So sometimes it's nice to just put them somewhere and see what they look like when they're dried. All right, so what I did before this was I prepped it with just spray paint primer, um, it's Rust-Oleum. So I see there's like a few random blobs on here. So I have these awesome nail files that I got a bunch of them off of Amazon for like not that much. I don't even know. They're like, they're trash. They're not like super nice, but they do the job. So that's all I need. And they come up, they, the pack that I got comes in like a bunch of different um, grains. So it's nice to have different ones because I actually have one that's like so efficient that I can get the belly markings off, which I've actually started doing for some of the horses. So the ones that I like really customize, I always take the, the belly marks off now because I feel like it's not really their horse anymore if you know you're changing it enough. Um, so. Also, what can they do to stop me? Nothing. I mean, people in all those other countries, like literally, like China, they take the horse and then they like put it in a mold and then they sell it on AliExpress for like 10 cents. Well, not 10 cents, but like a lot less than what they retail them for here. And I'm sure they don't make that, they don't cost that much to make. It's just that like, because they're well-known brands, they can mark up their stuff. Just like if you have a Nike like hat, that has a Nike logo on it. You can charge like 10 times more, so. So we just do this. I always use a fat square brush for this just to get, make sure that I don't have a lot of paintbrush strokes. So a lot of people think, 
oh, I'm painting a model horse. It is small. I need small brushes. Well, the thing is, when you're using small brushes, especially not a square brush, you're going to be getting a lot of paint, um, paintbrush strokes. And when you're using like a thicker paint, like Liquitex, it's really important to not have paint strokes. That's why I always apply very thin layers. Uh, you can thin, thin these down with water if you're really concerned, but just want to achieve a very smooth look. I'm not 100% sure why this is always a thing, but I'm just not a fan of haired models. Like if they're very, like if they have all those indentations on them. Some people like them because they think it makes them look more realistic, which I understand. But personally, I just don't really like it. I think it makes it more difficult to paint. And if you're using pastels, it makes it look super grainy. Um, so that's why a lot of people who use pastels really try to have a smooth surface before they start painting. But I usually just try and have a smooth surface to begin with. Even though I do airbrushing, I still do use pastels to supplement for shades that are kind of difficult to add with an airbrush or if I really just want a very small um, small area that is very specific then using pastels can be pretty nice and also sometimes I will add pastel like underneath or on top of airbrush just to change the color slightly um, and that works really well oh my gosh don't turn off on me also a pro tip if you have an iPad Pro, then you can change the settings to make sure that like it won't fall asleep on you all the time because it's so annoying when I'm like trying to paint a pattern and like I'm very focused and like doing it and then all of a sudden it's like screen is black. I'm like, wait a minute, no, I need this. And it's like, oh, I got paint on my brush, like I'm holding my model, like it's not dry. It's a scramble for life, but it's okay. All right, so that uh eh, mm, it could be a little bit darker but i think it's okay especially because when i airbrush i usually end up accidentally or not accidentally but i end up going over the lighter parts a little bit with the darker tones so it's going to end up being okay for the darker tone The thing I love about like my older, like my first repaint was that I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and the paint I used, I think I used similar paints to this, but I just didn't know how to do it right. Like sometimes I think that a lot of people think that there's very specific materials to do a model horse. Like when people say like, what kind of paint do you use? Like there's so many different paints out there. Like this is just, the paint that I personally use but I think that there's a lot of different options and like my option might not be the best option but it's just what I've been using and what I'm comfortable with but I think there's a lot of different options out there. I do know that people who have tried using Windsor and Newton ones found that they have to really apply a lot of layers and they're not super they're not super pigmented but they're very high quality and they're kind of thin layers so it's kind of hard to find a balance between having something that's thin, but also having something that's very pigmented, or else you're going to be literally sitting there forever. And like I've said before, apple barrel paints, even though they're really inexpensive, are not great because they are very clunky and they dry like chalky, and you don't want that on a model. Even if you put sealant over it, I still find that it is chalky and it's not the right texture. So I don't recommend using apple barrel paint, but like what text has been fine for me. A lot of other people just use different kinds of acrylics. But I mean, there is a little bit of a, some acrylics are good and some acrylics are not, but for the most part, if you're buying like, you don't have to buy super advanced level, like studio, like, you know, advanced artist level ones, but, if you go to Michael's, they'll, they have like separate kind of like intro, like medium, and then studio. Like you would probably just want the medium one. And if you're really going for your high range, like if you're really, you know, going at it, then maybe you want to try doing stuff with the really advanced materials. But personally, I don't because even with the medium like priced materials, it's already very expensive. So... We don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
But back to my school life, I am so glad that we are almost done with this school year because this school year has just been a mess. For some reason at my school, they decided that they were going to change it to be two semesters in, well, no, we usually have two semesters, but like it was two different sets of courses for each semester, which is kind of like college, but not like college because first of all, we only met four times a week and the classes were really short. I mean, maybe that is like college. I really don't know because I don't have experience going to college, but it was just not enough learning time for me. And I wasn't really understanding what was happening in some of my classes, specifically math class, but other classes I understood for the most part. But I just wish there was more school. And then we didn't have like actual assessments, which people are probably like, oh wow, like that's actually not that bad. Like you have all open note assessments. But for me, that really just like made me lose all my motivation. Like I was just, because t tests and like getting good grades, even though it's like, you shouldn't be motivated by that. Like it is what motivates me. Because it makes me, like, feel good to do well on something. But if I'm not getting any, like, I don't know, positive reinforcement, then it's kind of hard to continue doing it. So, yeah, that was not fun. Hopefully I'll be able to ride a little bit more this summer. Um, because I miss being able to ride more. But I'm glad that I was able to finally start riding it somewhere else, like, after COVID happened. Because I really missed just riding. Like, for not riding for seven months was terrible. And it definitely is something that brings me a lot of joy. And it's really sad to not be able to do it. So, that is something I'm definitely continuing in college. And something really exciting is that my grandmother might actually be getting me a saddle. I mean, I've been riding for 14 years. So, I think it is well earned. But I also need to get a new helmet. And I went to my local like tech shop and I tried on a bunch of helmets like we were there for so long and I was just trying on helmets trying on helmets trying on helmets and none of them fit me and we tried different liners different sizes and it was like my head is like a 55 but then it fits weirdly where it presses on my head on the sides and it's like not supposed to do that so it was very unfortunate. And the helmet I have now definitely does not fit me at all. Because it's always like flopping around. It's like way too loose. I never really got properly like fitted for one. So. But I tried on the Sam Shield. I tried on like all these other different brands that I didn't know. Um, really well before. And they just were not. Were not fitting me. And I was just like you know what at this point. I can't. And I even tried different liners with the Sam Shield and it just still was not working. And then they were saying, oh, like, they're kind of, like, on back order right now because of COVID. And I was like, oh, thanks, COVID. Like, you brought me so much joy. You've done so well for me. Okay, this needs a little... I feel like this still needs... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I have a bunch of different colors here right, right now. Um, yeah. A bunch of different models that I need to do. So that one, I need to grab that's over there. Um, but you are kind of unique. You have your own color scheme going on here. I feel like I could use a little tan maybe. It's like gotta mix different colors to make the color we want. What ingredient shall we add? That's how I feel when I'm doing this. I don't know about you. All right, if this doesn't work, then I'm gonna need to just start with raw or burnt umber and then go with white adding that. Although, I think we might be getting some more with this one. Oh, no, I need to add more of that though. But that looked like pretty... I'm thinking this might be, be, our, be our color here. I feel like it needs to be a little bit more like orangey. I don't know, I picked those colors out with the orange with the color picker, but it doesn't seem to be matching the picture to my eye. Yeah, I think this is better. Yeah, I like this a lot better. Okay. This will be what we'll use. 
for sure this is much closer to what I see. I see I don't think it picked up under here much very well I mean that's supposed to be it but that does not seem like it is so this is going to be the hunter horse so we'll do him and um yeah move you I will give you another layer in a second all right, Roses, the priming party's not exactly over, but stay tuned for more videos. If you enjoy this video, please be the sweet, generous person that you are and like it and subscribe to my channel. Like, only 20% of people like who watch my videos are subscribed, which makes me really sad. Also, go check out my website, lots of customs and other things for sale, and don't forget to stay sweet. Mwah.